Good evening, everyone. We're all set to begin tonight's 2017 Citizens Police Academy graduation program. Tonight's program is being aired live on several Durham television networks. At this time, I would like everyone to stand for the presentation of colors by the Durham Police Department's Honor Guard and the singing of our national anthem by Kimberly Walker. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the You may be seated. Good evening again. Uh, my name is uh, Officer Curtis Knight, one of the coordinators of this year's Citizens Police Academy, along with Officer Lawrence Brown. He's standing up uh, in the back over here. Um, what a fitting way um, to start uh, to celebrate National Crime Prevention Month. Um, tonight, we want to take the time to honor uh, 22 uh, residents who've taken their time um, to uh, come out and to spend their seven weeks um, together to learn more about the operations of the Durham Police Department and its employees. Um, at this time, it is my pleasure to introduce Captain Walter Tate, who is the commander of the Community Service Division, who will welcome you formally. Captain Tate. Thank you, Officer Knight. As he said, my name is Captain Walter Tate. I'm the commander for the Community Services Division. First, I want to thank you for coming out tonight because you could have been anywhere, but you're here with us tonight, so I do thank you. At this time, I would like to recognize any elected officials that may be in the building. If you would please stand, elected officials. Thank you. I also want to thank uh, Officer Knight, Officer Brown, and Ms. Kimberly Walker, our PIO office, for doing
doing such a fantastic job with this class. Um, this, is a, this is something that started in the mid-1980s and has evolved in some, into something beautiful. Um, I also would like to thank the instructors that gave their time and provided presentations to the class. Um, what we do in our Citizens Police, Acad Police Academy is the cornerstone of our community policing for Durham Police Department. And it just shows how we can work hand in hand with the community to solve problems. It's very informative, very educational. And with that being said, speaking of education, the person that I'm about to announce is big on education, big on training, and I think that there's one speed to really describe this person, and that's fast, go, as far as the leadership, and the expectation is very high. So without further ado, I would like to bring to the podium Chief Sarah Lynn Davis. Well, we just move according to the program. How's everyone tonight? Good. Thank you, Captain Tate, for that introduction. I really appreciate uh, the work that you and your team do on a daily basis to ensure that folks really understand that community policing is at the very heart of the Durham Police Department. So good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's so quiet in here. I'm not used to quiet celebrations. So it's OK to clap. It's OK to smile and laugh. This is an exciting time. Um, I already uh, mentioned uh, Captain Tate, but I also want to thank the officers as well, Officer Brown and Officer Knight. You all do phenomenal work. And of course, no one clapped for Kimberly Walker. But did you know she could sing like that? We always miss that opportunity to celebrate in her talent because we always take consideration of the ceremonial aspect of the posting of the colors. But Kimberly always sends chills up my spine when she sings. Thank you so much. So once again, we gather to welcome another academy class into the family of the Durham Police Department. But I think I'd be remiss if I did not take a moment for us to acknowledge the tragic events that have most recently occurred across our nation and its territories. The destructive flooding in Houston, Texas, and other portions of our country, the devastation wrought by the hurricanes in Puerto Rico and other parts of the Caribbean, as well as the most recent tragedy the senseless tragedy in Las Vegas, Nevada. I firmly believe that despite the divisions that are prevalent in some of our public discourse, we are people of one nation, and a tragedy for any of us affects all of us. Our hearts, minds, and fervent prayers most certainly go out to all of those who have been most directly impacted by these recent events. And now on a more uplifting note, congratulations to our graduates. Your particip yes. It's okay to clap, that's right. You all take instruction very well. Your participation in the Citizens Police Academy is a demonstration of your interest and commitment towards the betterment of your community. I'm confident that your Citizens Police Academy experience gave you new insights into the inner workings of the Durham Police Department. You've met many members of our dynamic and diverse workforce, and I trust that you have a newfound appreciation of DPD employees who serve with expertise, commitment, and professionalism. One of the key components to our success as a law enforcement agency is through our unwavering commitment to community engagement. What what does community engagement mean? One author tells us that community engagement is a framework that seeks to better engage the community to achieve long-term and sustainable outcomes, processes, relationships, discourse, decision-making, 
or implementation. This concept is based on principles that respect the right of all community members to be informed, consulted, involved, and empowered. Your participation in the Citizens Police Academy is a shining example of community engagement. There is a reoccurring theme in public discussions regarding law enforcement that there is a strong desire for the police to connect more directly and less authoritatively with the communities that they serve to establish a relationship. The Durham Police Department prides itself on the relationships and partnerships that we have built throughout this great community, the city where great things do happen. These relationships and partnerships were built in a variety of ways through crime prevention programs and initiatives, the establishment of a community policing philosophy baked into the organization, the Partners Against Crime program, the establishment of various neighborhood PACs within our city, our Police Athletic League, and various other community-based initiatives. The Citizens Police Academy is just one of those efforts, which is intended to further connect with our residents to build and strengthen relationships with our residents. Relationships are built on understanding one another. You have been afforded the opportunity to view life through the lenses of our police employees. And it is our hope that this experience has instilled in you some level of understanding that will further cement your relationship with your new DPD family, your police department. Your presence in this academy is, in fact, an act of community engagement and a continuation of the many relationships that have been built over the years. It is only through our relationships and our partnerships with our residents that we can hope to achieve our shared goal of a safer and more secure community where all people can live, work, play, and thrive. We want to encourage you to share your experience and what you've learned with your friends, family, and neighbors. And we thank you all for your participation and your continued support. Thank you and congratulations again. Thank you, Chief Davis. Each year we select a couple attendees to share their experiences during their time um, during the Citizens Police Academy. This year we selected four speakers uh, to just reflect and uh, give you all a little insight on their time in the academy. Our first speaker tonight is Mr. Michael Johnson. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, chiefs and distinguished guests. I'm Michael Johnson. I live in District 4, and I'm also a Durham Police Department employee. I've been with the Durham Police Department for a little over three and a half years. So I count it an honor and a privilege to be able to speak before you tonight. Just, just bear with me. I'm a little nervous. You know, when the chief came up, she said, what are you being nervous about? It's like, I'm graduating, I'm graduating, I'm graduating. I'd like to give a special thanks to Officer Brown, Officer Knight, and Ms. Walker, and all of those that work behind the scenes and make the, the Citizens Academy, Citizens Patrol Academy a success. Um, and also a special thanks to my family for allowing me the time to take part and coming out Tuesdays and Thursday nights. Um, Officer Brown taking extra snacks home, thank you. <laughs> Those extra snacks went a long way, they went a long way. So uh, tonight I would like just to talk to you about a few takeaways I appreciate and valued um, doing the Academy. And I will come to you from a, my first perspective as an employee, and then from a citizen's point of view. At first, I was a little apprehensive 
and attending as an employee. I didn't hear coworkers talking about it. So I was like, uh, I don't know. But I'm so glad I did. I am so grateful I did. There were a bunch of times I was like, I didn't know we did that. What? We have what? A B shirt? What's a B shirt? Oh, well, I, I, I didn't know canines cost that much. I was like, wow, uh, canines cost that much? And no matter how the employees, 911, they're not stressed at all the costs and um, things that they have to go through. I was like, it was just like, wow. But most of all, it was nice to know our police department's tops. And, you know, tops in the nation, not just tops in the state, it's tops in the nation. And, and where, we, where, where people come out or um, um, officers come out to train, they get the best training in Durham. Um, 911 civics, top in certifications. Highly recommended teams, the crisis intervention, hostage negotiation, forensics, and the list just goes on. We at the we, the Durham Police Department, we got it going on. I'm just saying, we got it going on, and I'm just so thankful for that. So, but most important, as a citizen, now knowing the many additional programs we as citizens of Durham can take advantage of. It was enlightening, you know, including the Police Athletic League, which um, my children took part in playing baseball and soccer, and, you know, they're still um, playing uh, soccer in high school and baseball in middle school. So it was the beginning of their athletic career. Um, the great program, well, I was kind of disappointed to find out it was ending, but where one of my sons was able to go to Washington, D.C. with a police escort for his entire stay. So everywhere they went, they had police escort to all the, the attractions and everything. Riding, it was like he was saying, I was riding through the city like if I was president. So, you know, oh yeah, you know, he loved that. So in, in closing, I'd just like to say thank you. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity. Now I have a deeper sense of pride in serving my fellow officers and DPV employees, but I must get the word out so change can come. Letting my friends and neighbors and brothers, my peeps, know to get involved. There, this is where change can take place, clear the air, remove the frustration, and gain an understanding of what the Durham Police Department is all about. So thank you again. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Our next speaker tonight is Mr. Andrew George. A tough act to follow on Michael. Uh, that was great. Um, so as, as Curtis said, my name is Andrew George. Um, I'm a currently a graduate student at, in biology at Duke University. Um, I live up in District 2 um, by the regional hospital. Bought my house about four years ago. Before that, I lived downtown um, at the Old Bowl Building. Uh, but as Chief Davis mentioned when she visited our class, rent's a little high downtown. So I uh, decided to move out of the district or the District 5. Um, being a grad student, uh, we don't get a lot of chances to get outside of the academic bubble. And a lot of my friends or other graduate students often ask, what are you doing? Why, <laughs> how did you hear about the Citizens Police Academy and how did you, you get involved? And why did you want to get involved? And for me and for a lot of others, I think it has a lot to do with the discussions that are happening around the country about what the role of, of the police department is. Um, and I wanted to find out more about what Durham Police Department thought their role was in our community. Um, and so I often was, or in order to come up and speak, I was asked to talk a little bit about what I learned. Um, and so we had so many sessions, so many good talks, so many people that came through and expressed their passion about the department and what they worked on individually. 
Um, and every one of them I learned, every, I learned something from. Uh, but I've only got three minutes, so I won't talk about all of them. Uh, if you want to learn, you can do the Citizen Police Academy. Um, so, uh, but I will, I will highlight two. Uh, they may seem, sound simple at first, but I'll go over it a little bit more. Um, being a police officer is hard. That's the first one. And then the second is it takes a village. So a police force is a constituted body of persons empowered by the state to enforce the law, protect property, and limit civil disorder. One of the heaviest burdens that a police department carries is that it is the sole purveyor of the legalized use of force. We, did, we do and should hold them to the highest standard of conduct precisely because of this reason. During the academy, we were able to experience through a training simulator how quickly the decision of if and when to use force must be made. We watched as an officer went through a number of scenarios that involved different uses of force. And luckily for us, we were able to rewind each situation and replay the tape again and again to understand and think through each decision made by the officer. Unfortunately, that is not a luxury that the officer has to make in real life or gets in real life. Our group had a very active discussion about the officer's choices and whether they were justified or not. And it, it, was, it was interesting to see the dialogue and they were very open to discussing. What did you see? How did you see it? Was it different than me and could I do better? Then it was my turn to wear the belt. So two of us got the lucky or unlucky opportunity, depending upon your perspective, of putting on the belt and trying it out for ourselves. Before the academy, I didn't know any police officers. I didn't understand the burden of what a police officer goes through. The sim simulation that I was selected to respond to was an active shooter on a campus, which, as I told you, I'm a graduate student, so for me it was a very interesting experience, to say the least. I didn't know what I would do. I didn't know how I would respond. I didn't understand what it would mean. Having gone through that simulation gave me a new appreciation of the reality of, of what the everyday job of a police officer is. And for the rare but even ever-present horrible things that happen, including what happened earlier this week in Las Vegas. The difficulty of their job became apparent during my ride along a few weeks ago as well. Through the course of the night, we responded to a variety of calls, from something simple as a noise complaint, keep it down, um, to the drunk driver who drove through a group of people waiting in line at a food truck at the Luluna nightclub, where seven people were injured, four of which were transported to a hospital, two of which were critically injured. This was just one night of the many that will weigh heavy on the mind of an officer over the course of a 30-year career. I know for me, the simulator and that night, I couldn't sleep for two days. And it was just a simulation, standing in front of a screen. As I said before, it takes a village. There are many, there's more than meets the eye when it comes to the police department, Michael being one of them. The outward facing individuals that many of us interact with, or in my case, try not to interact with, the, the patrol officer. Um, but after going through this, it became obvious that there are so many more people that are integral to keeping the department running smoothly and keeping our community safe. You have the counterparts, the fire department and the EMS who work with the police department to secure the scene and treat the injuries that are bound to happen on a daily basis. You have the persons telling them where to go, the dispatcher and the 911 operators. All of these people have thankless jobs. Their day-to-day -day usually involves 12 hours of seeing or talking to people on the worst day or worst moment of their life. We had the opportunity to tour the 911 call center to see these people in action. And as Michael said, they don't crack under pressure. While we were learning about the many screens that used to coordinate the response, I couldn't help but overhear. One of the operators was walking through someone help, walking through someone through how to help their friend who had overdosed, couldn't sleep again. It was through all these experiences that I saw how difficult your guys' job is. In the face of being underpaid, overworked, and underappreciated, it doesn't matter if you call 10 times a day, 10 times the next day, or 10 times the day after that, there will always be someone there to pick up the phone and help you on your worst day. 
I would like to close by thanking all of the sworn and non-sworn individuals for what they do every day here in Durham. I didn't know much about the police academy before I started our police department, um, but I have a greater appreciation for what you do on a daily basis. I would specifically like to thank Officer Armstrong, who gave me a ride along and listened to all of my questions. I'm sure that was a pain, but he did it with grace. Um, and then finally, I would like to thank Officer Knight and Brown and uh, Miss Kim Walker. And I would like to also say that if we had known you'd had that voice, you would have started every session <laughs> singing some song. I will put that in my survey. Thank you, Andrew. Our next speaker tonight is Ms. Sheila Coleman. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. My name is Sheila Coleman, and I'm a healthcare consultant with special interests and expertise in healthcare fraud and abuse. I'm a native of North Carolina, and my family and I have lived in Durham since 2004. We have one adult son and four grandsons, so you can imagine our interactions with law enforcement is of great concern to me as a mother and grandmother. One of my grandsons, Justin, who is here with us tonight, has said to me since the age of two, he calls me Yaya, and he says, Yaya, when I grow up, I want to be chief of police. I'm going straight to the top. So, so we want to thank Justin for his love of community service at such an early age. Thank you, Justin, I love you. Now, as for me, I've always had a healthy respect for law enforcement. But honestly, I cannot say the same for some of my family and some of the people that I know in my community. So I decided to attend the Citizens Police Academy, also known as the CPA, with the, do with the desire to shift that paradigm in order to learn more about the overall operations of the Durham Police Department as well as to be able to share that experience with some of my family and others in the community. I can truly say that attending the CPA has been one of the best decisions that I've ever made in my entire life. This evening, I would like to thank you for the opportunity. And before I do that in great detail, I want to share with you three of the insights of the many positive insights that I learned from the CPA. One of the insights that I learned from the CPA was from Corporal Drew, who gave a presentation on the re recruiting process for the Durham Police Department. After the presentation, one of our classmates asked Corporal Drew his opinion of what does it make to make a great or good police officer. And without any hesitation, Corporal Drew said, there are many qualities that make a great police officer, but in my opinion, there are two that are needed. The first one he said is heart. Now, what do we mean by heart? He went on to say, you have to have a heart to be a police officer, and that means you have to have a heart to serve your community. The second quality that Corporal Drew said was, you need integrity. Now that got my intention working in healthcare fraud and abuse. He says that integrity is just another word for honesty and having a great moral compass to do the right thing. So it doesn't matter if your shooting skill is 80%. It doesn't matter what your analytical skills are. If you do not have a heart to be a police officer, if you do not have honesty and integrity, you have nothing. So. In saying that, for me, I decided to say, well, it does, that, you don't just need that for a police officer. You really need that in every profession, in every facet of life. And so that was one of the insights that really struck close to me in knowing that the Durham Police Department is now making an effort in teaching and training not only about the analytical skills and sharpshooting, but also teaching the recruits, trying to weed them out to say, look, we're looking for the best. 
We're looking for the best that's going to go out there and represent our community, and not only represent our community, make a bridge so that the citizens can know that they can trust us. How awesome is that? The second insight that I would like to share with you that I learned from the police department is that the police department has a crisis intervention team, a team that is formed or was formed since 2007 and has over 245 trained officers who have gone through 40 hours of training to learn specialized training in order to do crisis management for those individuals who may encounter the police department with mental health issues. How awesome is that? How awesome is that that the police department here is saying that we recognize that of all the citizens that are arrested, many of them have mental health issues and really should not even be going through the criminal justice system. And if we can find a way to circumvent that and give them the help that they need rather than placing them in jail. This shows some of the great things, once again, that the Durham Police Department is doing, and it really struck to my heart in doing so. Lastly, one of the things that struck my attention was I did not know that there is an organization called You and 5 -0. That is an organization that was created by Deputy Chief Beverly J. Council, who retired from the Durham Police Department. And she created this program to address the rise of deaths that were occurring during interaction between law enforcement and some of those in our community, particularly African-American citizens. The primary objective of you and 5 -0 is to promote mutual respect between law enforcement and the citizens with the ultimate goal of sharing information and interactive techniques as to what we as citizens should and should not do, listen carefully, should and should not do, say and should not say when we are involved with interaction with law enforcement. While I already knew some of the points that were outlined in you and 5 -0, I can honestly say some of them I did not. As an example, in 2012, I was rushing down Highway 70, I believe, to my parents' home on the Eastern Shore. I had just learned that my parents' home had been destroyed by Hurricane Floyd, and I just got off an airplane, and away I was going. And lo and behold, who is behind me? My first instinct, because I grew up in a small town, was to reach over and do what? Grab my purse and reach for my license and registration. In the U and 5 -O program, I learned that, oh no, Sheila, that is not what you should do. <laughs> you need to sit tight, your hands should be on the steering wheel and visible at all times until that police officer tells you to move. You can best believe I got that now. <laughs> so I will now be able to take that and the all of the other helper information that I learned from the Citizens Police Academy. Lastly, I would like to thank all of those involved for the opportunity to be a participant in the 2007, to, I'm sorry, 2017 class of the CPA. Again, it has been a rewarding experience and I thank you. Thank you, Sheila. Chief Davis, have you had the opportunity to meet Justin? Okay, uh, don't let me forget, because I made him a promise that I was gonna introduce you to him um, once we finish. Um, our next speaker, our last speaker, um, is uh, Mr. Richard Konecki. Well, of course, everyone has pretty much said everything wonderful about the department, so I'll do the best I can. I wanted to take a minute to introduce myself a little bit to you. Uh, I'm Richard Konecki. I was born in Alaska. I want you to pay attention to the geography here for a second because it's a joke at the end of this. Grew up in Chicago. I got an architecture degree at North Dakota State University in Fargo, North Dakota. Moved to Minnesota, Minneapolis area. Lived there quite a while. 
and then we moved to North Carolina. My wife has been after me for 36 years to move somewhere warmer. We finally did. So we're not really Yankees, we're Midwesterners. There were three things that prompted me to apply for the Citizens Police Academy after the idea popped into my head by a cleverly placed ad cut out for the Raleigh Citizens Police Academy that my wife had put a little blue star on and say it set on the table for me. So she led me here. But <clears throat> I wanted to get a feel for the police side of what we see in the news every day. As you all know, uh, we see a lot more video in the media of negative encounters. Um, we see very few videos of wonderful encounters. And I think I, I had a feeling in my heart about how things were going, and it wasn't good. And my perception of the police departments was tarnishing. So I thought it would be a good idea to see from your side of the window and, and look at that. And I learned a lot from all of you about that and that there's another side to every story and another perspective. So I also wanted to learn a little bit about how my role as a citizen could contribute to the welfare of the police department. And when you move from a long distance from a place that you've lived a long time, like Minneapolis, you kind of get here and you have an empty wagon, right? Don't have a church home right away, don't have other organizations and things that you were doing. So I'm hoping that I can be part of this going forward in some way. And there's one little last selfish thing, and that is I'm working on a medical murder mystery and I'm hoping I can call you all when I need some <laughs> guidance on the plot. <clears throat> Like many people here, um, I was taught about how to interact with police when I was at a young age. My dad taught me that. And um, he, he told me, and so did my mom, if you're ever in trouble, look for a police officer. Go to them, you'll always be safe. And I'll tell you, you can tell by the advice my dad gave me when I was a young guy that it was uh, advice from a bygone era he said, oh, and by the way, if you ever get stopped by the police and the weather's bad, like it's snowing really hard or it's raining, get out of the car and go to them, oh. right? Because then they won't have to get out and get rained on or snowed on. They can sit in a warm car, right? Well, you know, I never did do that. <laughs> and of course, now I know a lot better than to not ever do that and to wait for proper instruction and follow those. I've always had a positive view of police. Uh, I think we've, we all know that not everybody has that same positive experience. So what did I learn through the academy? Uh, I think one thing for sure is that there's a whole lot more to policing than dialing 911 and waiting for the patrol officer to roll up in your driveway. Uh, I, I really had n no concept for all of the various things that happen in the background, um, all of the departments, all of the units that are there to help us be safe and to protect the community. And I don't know why, but I keep keyed on BCERT too because uh, I guess uh, not every community has one, has that unit, and so uh, that was one of the things I learned. Uh, one of the other speakers mentioned how super the Durham Police Department is, and I too keyed in on the fact that the 911 Folks have got three certifications simultaneously and have had for a number of years that makes them one of three in the nation that have that. So when you think about what Durham has done with the limited dollars that you're given, I would say that the money is very well spent. Um, it's a department that um, I think we can all be proud of, and I certainly am. Another thing that um, I learned was that in personal act interactions with police during this whole uh, period, that even though the minimum requirements to enter the academy 
uh, are there, right? Um, many, many of the officers I spoke with have advanced degrees of one kind or another, from criminal justice to masters in psychology. And if you don't think that a patrol officer is driving around in the car with a master's in psychology, I met one. So um, there's a lot of capability and a lot of people give time of their life to better their themselves and then they bring that back to us in their community service. Another thing that I learned was that this police department holds itself accountable. Uh, when you don't like the interaction you might have had with a police officer, you can file a complaint. They had forms in our book. You can, here, hand these out. If you want to file a complaint, you're welcome to do that. Something that surprised me was every single one is followed up on. Every, everyone has contact made. Doesn't matter if you complained 10 times last week and you're complaining again this week too. And those, file, those complaints are finished, closed out, and then they store them for 30 years. So I think that they take feedback from the community very, very seriously here. And that's something that I think we can all be proud of as well. So although no department is perfect, I think this one works hard at always trying to improve, no matter how good you ever get. So lastly, I would like to thank Chief and the command staff and Kimberly Walker and officers Knight and, uh, oh geez, Brown, sorry man, uh, for the opportunity to be part of the Academy. Thanks very much. Thank you, Richard. At this time, I would like to welcome Administrative Services Bureau Assistant Chief Ed Sarvis to present special recognition to the Citizens Police Academy faculty. Thank you. I get a fun task tonight. I get to present the Citizens Police Academy Faculty Awards. It's important to note that this year marks the first time the Academy has presented special awards to presenters who facilitated Academy sessions. Academy coordinators, Officers Brown, Knight, and Kim Walker are committed to finding new ways each year to continually strengthen the Citizens Police Academy, certainly recognizing their peers for their professional expertise and support of the Academy is one of those key elements. The first recognition, the CPA Above and Beyond Award, is decided by the Academy coordinators. This year's recipient is the Durham Police Department's Training Division. <laughs> Captain Wrights. Captain Wrights, please come forward on, on behalf of the staff. This award reads, the CPA Above and Beyond Award is presented to the DPD Training Division in recognition of extra efforts made and exceptional professional training and instruction in the Citizens Police Academy that are contributing to greater understanding of the challenges of policing and stronger police community relationships awarded the fifth day of October, 2017. The second faculty recognition is based on feedback and insights provided by the members of the graduating class. Nearly all of the graduates stated that choosing a best session was nearly an impossible task, as there were many presenters and sessions that stood out. However, the 2017 CPA Most Engaging Session and Faculty Award is presented to Elizabeth Poole and Chandra Fullard of the Durham Emergency Communications Center. This is Elizabeth Poole. I don't know that Ms. Fullard was able to attend tonight, so. Okay, so please accept on her behalf. Let me, let me read some of the excerpts we got back from some of the graduates. One stated, I was very pleased with the time they took at the communication center to explain in detail what the dispatchers go through, the emotional level they encounter with every call, the amount of training was astounding. They are two behind the scenes heroes. Another person said the presenter stood out that who stood out for me was Elizabeth Poole. She showed great enthusiasm for and knowledge about her job. Her presentation was professional, clear, and very interesting. She related well to the class, answering questions with ease and grace, 
After her presentation, it was amazing to be able to visit the 911 Center with Chandra Fullard and observe a small slice of its action. Both Ms. Poole's presentation and the visit to the center were informative and made me appreciate all the hard work that goes on behind the scenes to make our community safe and welcome. Congratulations to the faculty award recipients and especially to the graduating class of 2017, Citizens Police Academy. Thanks, Chief Sarvis. At this time, we'll begin the presentation of the certificates to the 2017 Citizens Police Academy class. We had a total this year of 22 graduates. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we have four uh, that couldn't make the program tonight. At this time, I'm going to ask the executive command staff to come forward. And I'm going to ask the members of the graduating class to stand in alphabetical order, please. Certainly, this was a great sacrifice of time on their part. The academy lasted seven weeks, as you've heard, and the requirement to graduate, which we strictly adhere to, you must attend at least 10 of the 13 sessions. And this class, um, I think, has had the best attendance rate of any um, that we've had in recent years. So give yourselves a hand. So as I call your name, please come forward to receive your certificate from Chief Davis and to shake the hands of the executive commanders. Charles Anderson is not here tonight. Joseph T. Biondi. And we're going to take a group photograph after the program. So because we're on live television, we're going to forego the individual ones at this point, OK? All right. Our next graduate is Tracy D. Leggett Bragg. <laughs> Our next recipient who was unable to attend is Martha Brim. And next, we have Sheila J. Coleman. Sharnetta Cooper. Chris Dove was unable to attend tonight. So next we have Christina Fieria. Matthew Filter. Andrew George. Rosalind Hunter was unable to attend. Michael A. Johnson. <laughs> Richard M. Konecki. <laughs> Shannon Leskin. <laughs> Isabella Lima. Marta Molina. <laughs> Ronald Roddy was unable to attend tonight. Tricia Reisner. <laughs> David Stinson. <laughs> Jamie Tindall was unable to attend. Kevin T. Walls. Last, but certainly not least, Elizabeth Harper Weiner. <laughs> Let's give our graduating class another round of applause. <laughs> Graduates, please be mindful that immediately after we close the ceremony to meet us in the front for your class photo, OK? Thank you.
this time, I would like to welcome Patrol Services Division Assistant Chief Todd Rose, who will be giving the closing remarks. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Todd Rose. I am the Assistant Chief for Patrol Services. Um, I get the honor to give the closing remarks tonight. Um, once again, let's give our graduates another hand. We're very proud of you. Really would like to thank you for devoting your personal time to come out and come to the academy. It means a lot to us. Um, I know it will mean a lot to your families that you're trying to get involved in your community. Um, we sincerely hope that you gained a better understanding of the way the Durham Police Department operates. That's where the, some of our units operate. Um, we encourage each of you to be an ambassador for the Citizen Police Academy. Please go home and share your experiences with your family, friends, and neighbors, and let's see if we can fill those seats for the next academy. Um, this academy would not be very successful if we didn't have the dedicated people that run this thing every year. And we would like to you know, formally recognize, you've heard their names tonight, but uh, we would like to formally recognize the academy coordinators, Officer Lawrence Brown and Curtis Knight. <laughs> Outstanding job. The Citizen Police Academy liaison, Kim Walker. Um, the support staff, which is Miss Celeste Edwards, right, sitting right there. And we really would like to acknowledge the uh, Durham Police Department's Honor Guard for participating tonight. Thank you very much. And also the uh, City of Durham Public Affairs Office who gave us this wonderful venue and allowed us to be on TV. Please give them a round of applause. We thank all of you for coming and joining this celebration with us tonight. Please join us in the lobby for refreshments. Everyone, please have a good evening and drive safely. Good night. <laughs>